but even Kelly's return couldn't fix our defence. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what a shocker. I'll tell you what, if you're in line, Albert I hope he was making a joke. I think he was. Great try from Shaw, but Leeds got four tries whilst being tackled. Says it all. There you go. Um, I don't, are people like trolling me and trying to get me wound up by putting childs rather than child? No, Mark. People just don't know how to spell his name. Mark, if you do, you, what size your ego that you think that just people casually misspelling James? No, no, I don't mean everyone. I don't mean everyone. I mean our listeners. No, <laughs> no Mark, far from it. But though now you've done it, I'm certain there'll be quite a few yeah. that do in future. Yeah. So stra- yeah, you best get ready for that. We've done that. He's been called Childs every time. Because now it's going to happen. But James Child. Perhaps not having his best day, but I'm sorry, if you concede 52 points, then I fail to see how it's anybody's fault but your own. I don't think any of the Hull fans are suggesting it. They're just rounding out the review to tell us they didn't like the films, the reference. Oh yeah, but I reckon I could, dip, in, like I reckon I could dip into a forum and find plenty of people that would blame James Oh, Carter. probably, yeah, no but, doubt. But I'm, yeah, I'm not saying that our... our in fact, go and that. find out how many have actually called him by his real name. Yeah. Yeah, you're only allowed to have an opinion on him if you can spell his surname correctly. It is child, isn't it? Am James I going mad? It's, there's no... There's James no Child. We're going to look like a right pair of twats if we've, if we've been slacking them up and getting you wrong. His name is James Child. Yeah. Let's stop while you find it out. Well, I'm, I'm on it. I'm, 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 I don't need Yeah, listen, now we've got tremendous amount to say on this one, really. I think the problems are evident for Hull. They do clearly miss Danny Houghton a lot more than they would like to. Um, and whilst it was good to see them welcoming back Albert Kelly and his, what he contributes, added to them. Over the weekend, your thumbs up tells me that we've been saying his name right, which is mm. a massive relief because we can get we can stay up on our eye horses now. Did Kelly get a try though in this one? I can't uh, remember. If he's got one of the tries, I don't recall. I've seen I've seen lots of rugby league this weekend. Um, but listen, is it time to kick Radford out of the fucking changing room again? Because there's something not quite clicking. They did it at Huddersfield, didn't they? Stone got yes. locked out. Yeah, he's been locked out. Yeah. I'd the keep, trend is continuing. I'd keep, but, him, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, keep, I'd keep him locked down, to be perfectly honest. It's only, it's only just getting into having his star player, Jake Mamo, play. Come on, he, he came go. over and his one real signing was, let's bring Mamo, please. Yeah, he's, he's, he's gone all in and singing from an indie band. Good luck. Anyway, <laughs> let's get off let's get off Rickstone and get back to this. Um, Did you see... Now, I've said this a lot about tries recently, right. and particularly tries either scored by jo- uh, Joel Moon or tries conceded by Hull FC, but it was fucking embarrassing. His, I think it was his first try. Right. He must have ran, like, 10 metres forward, but about 40 metres in total by just brushing against every fucking old player he didn't want to touch him. Yeah. It was... Well, take nothing away from Joel Moon. He's there to be tackled, and he's he's evading people. But Hull FC needed to be sharper in defence. I think that's so been that a theme not, for them for a couple of weeks, hasn't it? If not, not just more. on him, but like they keep missing tackles mm. constantly. Well, they'll, they'll show that up now. That Albert, Albert Kelly's back in. I'd start him. Okay, get him doing some of the uh, get him doing some of the out and work. I tell you what, they need to think about. Well, they do think about it when we get to the Easter Monday game about mm. getting a, a proper hooker interchange yeah. again. Because whilst Washbrook's working his ass off, he can't. He's not an hooker. Is a, and he's a decent defender, but he can't cover for other players. He's not like yeah. a transcendental defending defensive talent yeah. like Danny Houghton is in terms yeah. of his defensive engine and his yeah. appetite to get around the player, the ball area, mm. to get yeah. around the player with with the ball yeah. constantly. You just Danny Houghton's almost worth more tackles than he makes to Hull FC, isn't he? When you think of where they come and what it means to them in terms of showing up that defence, and when you look at what's mm. happening now, he's not in the side. And it's not like you, you, you sort of Sam Powell makes a lot of tackles, but most of them are coming in a second or third man to control. No, he's instigating a lot of tackles. He he's is the first in yeah, contact in yeah. a lot of cases. Absolutely. Um, what did you take from this one? Any more? Just that Hull's goal line defence was embarrassing again. Yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be happening, should it? But it sounds like they were pretty much crap across the board with the, when we get to the stats. Yeah. So, well, what do the stats tell us? Well, that Hull managed five clean breaks and four tries is quite remarkable. Off sixty-six fewer carries and only eight hundred and forty-eight total metres, three hundred and forty-two less than Leeds, but made at zero point eight metres per carry better average gain. 
So some some good attacks stuff then, I suppose. Mm. Um, the damage for Hull was done by the twelve to five error count and the fourteen to eight penalty count, and another sub ninety percent tackle success of eighty eight percent. There you go. So individually, I imagine there were a lot of people standing out for leads. Yeah, but we go with Matt Passover trying two try assists, Joel Moon with two tries, eight tackle busts. Ryan Hall with a try, 112 metres, two clean breaks. Callum Watkins with a try, five tackle bus, 123 metres. Mitch Garbutt with a try, five tackle bus, 137 metres. So notice how many people I'm talking about tackle bus on. There you go. Strolling through. Right, four Hull FC then. Who stood out? Well, Danny Washburn worked hard, uh, 43 tackles. Gareth Ellis was back at 103 metres were made. Jamie Shaw with a try and 107 metres. And Mark Minicello with a try, five tackle bus and two clean breaks. Did offer something in attack. Okay, final game of Good Friday then down at the AJ Bell. Salford's impressive season continued, um, although it was a scrappy affair with a 12 6, or certainly a low scoring affair, 12 6 over reasonably local rivals. Lee Centurions in front of 5,834 people, and the people of Salford must have been very busy celebrating, Mark, because not one of them got in touch. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, nothing to round out what we know, which yeah. was. 38 seconds on the highlight reel on this game yeah. on the uh, yeah. on the Sky website so um, hard to take much <laughs> we're not going to well listen if you can't be asked to get in touch and you're all too busy packing your bags for your trip to Perpignan I hope you realise that that's come back to bite you in the arse hasn't it uh, but it doesn't sound like it was Look, exciting. Just, I think no. it, I think it got caught up in in the worst of the burst of weather that we had. There was mm. a bit of rain around the Wigan game, but yeah. I remember being sat in Wigan Central, the lovely, wonderful Wigan Central, yeah, amazing. and um, and the rain was absolutely hammering it in about an hour after the game, mm. probably yeah. just before so Aiden that, came in. So that time he had to go right, and check in his hotel. So about around about that sort of time, about. About four ish. So that would have been in the middle of this game, wouldn't it? That would have been passing through during this game. Yeah. A few miles away. And it certainly had an effect on things. But look, Salford get the win and they continue to win games. So Salford fans will tell you that it doesn't necessarily matter how you win them if you're winning them. Lee, based on what you see in terms of Salford's scoreline, might have reason to be disappointed that they didn't come out with a better performance to perhaps upset the apple cart a little bit, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. You'd think with Salford not being able to take advantage of the chances in this one, mm. it was an opportunity missed for Lee. But maybe Salford weren't taking advantage of their chances, but Lee weren't Offering really much. making any chances yeah. that they were ever really out of just to try away from winning this game. Yeah. Well, what did the stats tell us? Does that bear that out? Yeah, well, with 8-2 to two in clean breaks and 364 metres made at 0.6 metres per carry better game, Salford should probably have done better than the two tries to one end result. A 7-4 a seven to four penalty count partially held them back. It was an error-strewn game, 33 in total, so just one behind the, the, the lead of this season mm. in total, uh, but a 19-14 to 14 er- count against Lee as well as a 4% loss on the team tackle success that has just about come standard for them unfortunately this year so 19 is a fuck ton of errors in it yeah it certainly is okay individually then who stood out for us Lee Mossop five Oops. tackle bus 116 metres Justin Carney five tackle bus 122 metres two clean breaks Junior Sow 195 metres two clean breaks um, convicted spousal user Robert Louis with a try assist 101 metres and Chris Wellham his a uh, Super League return looks like he never should have spent a year or so out of it, and uh, with a try in 134 metres. Did anybody stand out for Lee Centurions? Well, Matty Dawson made 130 metres, and Adam Hickson made uh, 100 metres, so it sounds like a lot of kicks were returned before the balls were spilled at the bottom of the end of them. Fair play. Right, well, that's round nine covered then. Let's take a look back now at round ten of Super League. Right then, let's get stuck into Easter Monday, Mark. We'll start down at Bellevue, where Wakefield dusted themselves down from their defeat at Castleford and put in a creditable performance against the reigning champions Wigan. It was 10 points to 16 in favour of your world champions in front of 4,640. I'm a little bit disappointed with that crowd. Low numbers, yeah. from Monday. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it at Bellevue. I thought I'd go this year because it might be the last chance to go. Um, well, you rubbed shoulders with some of uh, Sky's elite. Didn't well, you? Barry Barry walked past and had a chat before the game. There uh, you go. He asked where you were, then was very complimentary about what I bring to the show, and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, he, then he went off to do his business. Yeah, well, it was nice go. to have a quick chat with him. 
Well, my, my, my little brother was uh, impressed that like he knew me by name and stuff. There you start. go. Look at that. Kelsey didn't know me well. She shouldn't should watch the bits in between the games. She just watches the, the game footage. <laughs> there you go. Well, Barry knows a thing or two about being ably assisted by someone who's good with stats, doesn't he? So he probably does appreciate what you bring to the game. Okay. Um, who we got start, in touch with us then? We start with Tony Bowling at Tony underscore Bowling. Um, I assume think Bowling is his surname, or he likes funny. Bowling, or maybe he's from Bowling. I think it's. M- more likely one of the first two options, but Tony, tell us. Yeah, uh, we'd love to know. He says, "I bet we never find out." Well, once once I cover off the ref conversation, we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna, gonna alienate a few yeah. ways your fans. I mean, excellent. I might just go to the loo for this bit. Go on. Sorry, what does Tony from Bowling? No, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. He says, "I don't like it'll bashing. All right. I don't like bashing the ref, but when the refing is so poor, what options do we have? No control of offside for both teams. Shocking decisions. Dangerous tackles not properly penalised. Shocking. Glad the result was cl- as close as it was, and it could have gone either way. Right up to the seventy sixth minute. Paul Luna Lewis says, "Is Morgan Escaray single? I'm asking for a friend." Do you know what? I'm not sure, but I think not. Only on the basis that Emma spent about half an hour on... um, I can't remember if it was Monday night or Sunday night. Going through Wigan players on Instagram. (laughs) Um, Is this what our podcast has become? And then, like, seeing who had babies and who didn't have babies... Because she was like, oh, they're all having bloody babies, aren't they? And then I told her that George Burgess had a baby, but he didn't play for Wigan, but um, still. Right. So, yeah, she was on about babies. I think it started with a cute little Easter picture of Sam Tompkins' kid. Right. Mm. Okay, there you go. So we think Escaray is single. I don't know. I think he's got... Emma thinks he's got a kid, but I've never seen him knocking around with any bird. Yeah, well, there you go. That sounded so blokey. <laughs> I'm not seeing him Really, because the way you delivered it, looking at me, it came across quite camp, Mark. So I don't know where you're, where you're getting that from. He might not be single, but I think you could, um, you could shoe on yourself into his life as an English tutor based on, uh, based on his post match oh, interviews. Oh, God, getting Paul Angela Lil- Powers to ask. Poor little lamb. To ask her, the way she frames questions. I know. Um, it's complicated enough if you speak the Queen's. Never mind, poor old Morgan Escaray. <laughs> Anyway, Wakey White said, Good defence from both sides in this game, although both sides were quite poor with the ball, both in terms of completion and creativity. Bit gutted as I felt Wakey with a slightly better side over the 80 minutes. We just didn't capitalise when we had chances to post points. Not one to bash refs, but think Sergeant Smith made some pretty poor calls which cost Wakey more than Wigan at key points in the second half too. Right, OK, so that's the feedback taken care of. Come on, let's talk about this refereeing performance. Well, let's start with... From your point of view. Bearing in mind, I haven't a tremendous amount of this one. Oh, did you not watch no, this one? Uh... Let's start with the Simbin of Anthony Gellin, mm-hmm. um, which I think was the right call. Yeah, it was legit. Um... I, I, know that, I know that Kate and Brown got into a bad position and it wasn't helped by Sam Powell sort of finishing the tackle yeah. like not not that Sam Powell wasn't entitled to go in at that stage and he didn't go in forcefully it's just it added to the fact that he was in an awkward position mm. when he touched him already on yeah. his sort of shoulder area but it was careless to me mm-hmm. the fact that he's got a grade B charge Gellin has and Kristen Inu got nothing for his Late lift and dump, yep. on singular lift and dump in control of an opposing player, just got a caution and no in game punishment either. I don't think that that's right, but I do think that Gellin getting pulled up in front of the disciplinary to have a word about his technique mm-hmm. and getting a simbin in this game was the right call. But I do think it was more a careless sort of flip of the leg trying to slow the player's momentum down and, and that sort of thing. And he I think he expected Luluai to have had hold of Kane Brown because if you watch a lot of times nowadays, players will sort of lift a leg out of position to try and sort of either spin a player or take take their ability to keep the leg drive going. Mm-hmm. But usually, you'll have another of your colleagues on him in control of it. Yeah, and Luluai was there and came, almost came off him as. Gellin did the sort of flick. He didn't drive him into the floor, so it no. wasn't like the worst of, of that sort of thing. But he did end up in a position, difficult position because of it. I think there was an element of misfortune with the what Wigan player who pulled out being the one yeah. who would have controlled how high yeah. he went. And he wouldn't have gone above the horizontal. I actually think there was one that... On Fafita by Navarrete that was really low to the ground, so he never really got above the horizontal as such. But he 
but Navarrete did force him into the turf. Mm. And there was one in the second half where Fafita just dropped his whole body weight on Anthony Gellin after tackling him, getting him prone, and then just basically got up and went down on him, yeah. almost like a pin move or something. Right. Um, which, were, which were... Which were...